Karen Cataline, and I am delighted to bring on the program somebody I've had the pleasure of inter- interviewing on other shows when I fill in for lots of other hosts, including Alan Nathan, uh, and I'm particularly happy to have him on my home show, Spouting Off. His name is Richard Manning. He likes to be known as Rick Manning, a D.C. insider who frequents the White House where he meets with President Trump, VP Pence. Can't wait to talk to him about Pence and other high-level officials on a regular basis in his capacity as the president of Americans for Limited Government. Welcome to Spouting Off, Rick Manning. Hey, Karen, how are you doing? And obviously my uh, my meeting in the White House time is uh, is come to an end at least for four years, so it's oh. a um, so I, I, I'm going to have to change the intro because uh, it's uh, because I don't don't want anybody to think I'm meeting in the White House in the uh, in, in the post Trump world. So it, that leads I don't us even to add my marks point. on my character. <laughs> hey, Rick. So uh, let's first say I'm going to assume that you know that there's an alternate narrative running around, uh, rumors, narratives, whatever, that something different is going to happen on Wednesday, January 20th, than most people expect. It sounds like you expect Joe Biden to be inaugurated on January 20th. Is that is that correct? I do. I, I expect that to occur, and it's a... Right. And, and let me let me... I'll give you the exact reasons why. Um, the impeachment that the House did had nothing to do with anything other than ensuring that the president leaves office. Okay, and if they if an alternative scenario played out, the Senate would take that and within 14 seconds would would do a conviction and it would be over. So it, when you get down to it. I don't think there is – there's no political will um, amongst the congressional, the legislative branch, to do to stand up and, and do anything. And as a result, uh, given that the president is uh, – has been uh, impeached under false pretenses uh, in, a, in a snap impeachment without any, any hearings or any facts available – um, but that does have the effect of creating a, uh, a jeopardy that is that doesn't exist otherwise. Okay, so let's delve into this a little more because there's so much misinformation. We're in uncharted territory. People are learning things about the Constitution they never knew, <laughs> never thought they'd need to know, but we well, do and, need and to know. I'll tell you a and secret. Me too. Don't they? Uh, what'd you say? <laughs> I, I'll tell you a secret. Me too. <laughs> All of us, all of us, yeah. anybody who who thinks they I mean, I know constitutional attorneys are going, I'm going to have to consult with people on this. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have heard, though, and because I thought that same thing, that the Senate would have to have a two-thirds vote to convict. Is that not correct? No, that's do true. You think, do you think two-thirds of the Senate already uh, controlled very, very razor thin margin. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, Lynn Cheney, that turncoat, would Liz, excuse me, Liz Cheney, would vote to convict based on nothing, based on false evidence. But I just don't know if two thirds of uh, the Senate would vote to convict. Well, and I'm not suggesting this I, is how it will play out either. Yeah. Well, I I will tell you that. You had a proxy vote, and that was the vote on whether to extend the uh, time in terms of the electoral decision for 10 days so the Senate could determine uh, the validity of the fraud claims and do an independent uh, investigation into that. And there were not 34 senators who voted to do that. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they would vote to... Well, what it means is is on something that was a simple ask – which is yep. let's just take a look at the voter fraud. Mm-hmm. There weren't 34 Republican senators who said let's, let's take a look at the voter fraud. Mm-hmm. So the – and I'm just giving you practical Washington, D.C. considerations. I'm not talking about what's desirable and what's not desirable. I know. 
but it's a so just to be clear but you know you're asking I'm, I sit here I look at stuff I say what's doable and what's not doable mm-hmm. I think the, the challenge is that um, right now the president has a an impeachment hanging over his head and Mitch McConnell can go to him and say um, well you know the moving van either arrives or uh, today or it arrives tomorrow but it's going to arrive but he's not and, uh, well i mean he's not being impeached for i mean <laughs> oh my let's back up a little here okay yeah. rick um, and i'm not because, by the way i'm not advocating that once again oh i know clear. okay i'm just trying to talk about what happened what would happen in what real washington dc yeah but see you know it's funny because you are the perfect guest to have this this particular show cuz i've been ranting not personally at you by any stretch, right. but people who I know who are longtime Washington insiders, and they're using their knowledge that I don't have. I mean, I I vote, I ran for a house seat once, right. <laughs> a state house, state house seat once. That's the extent of my you know political uh, that end of it. I'm a commentator, right? Um, and they seem to be present company excluded more disconnected from the phenomenally different sea change we are in in the current times that uh, did you ever think you'd see what's happened in the last year so what makes anybody think this is a normal period of time in american history it it is is not a normal period of time in american history it is a it is unlike anything i've ever seen it is uh uh, and truthfully, this is one of the reasons why uh, the House and Senate refused to evaluate the electors, because everybody is off their moorings. Everybody is sitting there. They're, they're adrift because there aren't anchors that they can, they can grab onto, because what we've witnessed is the most massive theft of an election in American history. We've seen, and because it was so widespread, you couldn't say if you correct this one state, it gets fixed. Because you had to correct three states, no one state, oh, no one delegation would say, we're going to take responsibility for it because they had no expectation that anybody else would do so and they weren't going to stick out like a sore thumb. Because politicians, by definition, are cowards. They, are, mm-hmm. they, are, they operate at the whim of the voters, which they should do. Wait but a second. in that instance, it worked against us because they were afraid of the of the social media onslaught that those brave members are under are being subjected to right now as they're be call, being called traitors and having engaged in sedition for having stood up and said we want to have fair we want to make sure the elections were were fairly um, held rick rick i've just got to just step in here sure. a minute just because i love debate <laughs> I yes love i love it that's great or I, I would not be a talk show host, you know? I don't right. just have guests on to have them talk. And, no, but I'm, I'm saying I love your point of view. I love that you're sharing it. But when you said they serve at the whim of the voters, I just went, hold on. <laughs> when I was talking about the unprecedented nature of history right now, part of the core of that is that the electeds, wherever they are, the great many of them are not serving at the whim of the voters. They are serving at the uh, in opposition to what the voters voted for. They're serving in opposition of the Constitution, and they have become dictators, not servants. So they don't anymore do that. They have an agenda. They're pushing the the Great Reset and all the rest of it. And so anybody who thinks, and I don't know that you do, we haven't gotten there yet, thinks there's going to be a fair election in 2022, 24, 26, 28, is fooling themselves if we don't put an end to this right now. It's certainly been my argument. It's been my argument from, uh, from November 6 on. It's, it, they clearly, there, or November 3 on that clearly that what was at stake is the future of fair and honest elections. Yes. And given the, the massive uh, 
vote fraud that occurred, we had a responsibility to get to the bottom of it because for, for two reasons. Number one, massive vote fraud occurred and shouldn't, you know, cheaters shouldn't prosper. But secondly, and most importantly, if massive vote fraud did not occur, then there had to be a fair, thorough evaluation. There had to be court cases that actually heard the evidence. So people felt knew that the system, while they didn't feel comfortable with it, at least the system had been had taken a look at it. Mm-hmm. And the truth is the system never to. took a look at it. They denied they, they denied to. it and they refused to do so. And that's why people rightfully have questions about whether or not their vote counts. Having mm-hmm. said that, it's and, yeah. and quite honestly it is the you probably you probably realize from our various conversations that I'm I'm relatively thoughtful in terms of trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Yes. And if I don't believe that a uh, pathway is possible, um, mm-hmm. I would rather close my organization down than to pursue something that is fraudulent. Okay. And, so and I've had ask- that conversation in my head yeah. about how we get from point A to point B. Yes. And I still believe that yes. the process, that our system is, there's no doubt our system is broken. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that our system is beyond repair. And while it is going to be really hard to repair it, I think we, we can still do that. And I'm just, not, I'm just not at the point where I'm willing to give up on, on, you know, on this country as we know it uh, at this juncture. And it's a – so. It, but trust me, the things you're saying – have been kept, have, I've had many sleepless nights. Right, we all have. But this. you misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting we're giving up on the country. I'm suggesting that the best time, I don't think you disagree with what I'm about to say, the best time to stop communism is before it takes hold. I've had people who, uh, who lived it and who have said that to me in no uncertain terms. Everything must be done to stop it from taking hold, especially when it is garnered through uh, lying, cheating, stealing, and deceit. Which and is how it usually cheating. is garnered. Um, <laughs> which is usually how it is garnered. And, and yes, course. that is exactly right. Of course. Once, so once, we take once a, Hugo Chavez ends up in control yes. of Venezuela, there's right. never another fair election, and no matter what and happens... Using the same are, Dominion right. <laughs> servers you're, you're exactly that were, right. were, that were uh, sprung on us. Such an interesting conversation. I really enjoy talking to Rick Manning. He's agreed to stay with us for one more segment, which will wrap up the show. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about... We'll, we'll have a little more of that debate and discussion, because I haven't given up hope before Inauguration Day, not after. I'm not ready to even go there yet. Uh, Karen Cataline, you're listening to Spouting Off, and this is our flagship BBS radio. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 